Hi guys and girls, John Moore with you again. Uh, this time we're doing the, uh, I suppose the first, <coughs> excuse me, first update on the uh, main M3 A3 Bradley with Burt Brusk, Busk 3, Bradley Urban Survival Kit. Anyway, so far I got the instructions, we just, we start with the instructions, I'll just move this to the side. Right. Check my little board. I have everything clipped to that. It makes it much handier, and I have it on a little stand there, so I can see. Right. It starts off with instruction. Start off as normal instructions do. At number one, doing the wheels and everything else. Uh, John, being John, I just looked through the instructions and said, right, what's the most boring thing I can do? Because um, a couple of days ago, I wasn't a hundred percent into doing this. I uh, wanted to get stuck into it, but I wanted to do it right. So I said, what i do is, I'll, I'll start with the most tedious part of it all. I'll start with the tracks. Right, so I started with the tracks. And anybody who's been uh, on Facebook or anything, I I, I did uh, I did a little thing on, on Facebook on, on showing the uh, the tracks and things. So I'll just move this out of the way. Get down. This little object here, which is my brand new cutting mat. I'll have to explain about that in a while. Right, here we go. Let's 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 zoom right in now if we can. Right. Now where are we? I'll move them up into the into the into position. Right. These come like that. Right, two a piece. It's got uh, where are we? I'll get this, get this bit, bit central here. Right, it's got a piece of plastic here, one here, and one little nub here. They've got to be removed and you know stacked, cleaned off. Right, there's eighty links per side. That's one hundred and sixty of these little things that you've got to uh, to clean off. Right, once you've got the uh, the sprue gates, you call them sprue gates, I don't know what they're actually officially called, cleaned off. All right, then you've got, let's get this over to the centre. I don't know if you can see it there. Yeah, you can just see it there. Not my dirty nail. My hands are always sipping dirty. There are always bits and pieces underneath my fingers. So I'm always fiddling and always pulling and dragging at something or other. All right, that's got to be cleaned off, otherwise it doesn't fit properly. And you've got the other little bit here, just a bit of sanding and cleaning. And what I did was, like like everybody else does it, you know, clean it out with a bit of a sharp knife. Um, I use this little triangular file, which fits perfectly into there. Got them down, got them cleaned off. This side, just rub the ultimate sander both sides give it a nice shine off and then they can be fitted they click together they're absolutely lovely but like I said I timed myself just to be just for the crack it took me two minutes for each piece to be cleaned off properly now that I didn't include all the cutting off of all the sprue off all the gates because I did was I just cut them all off and stuck them into a, a, a little pot then worked on from there then. And I timed each one at two minutes to clean off and fit. And for 80 per side, that's 160. And that worked out, I believe it or not, in actual work time. Not how long it took me. It took me a lot longer than that. But in actual working, working time, over, over 10 hours, believe it or not. Just 10 hours of just cleaning off. So it took me actually about three, three four days. Three days to be, to be, to be quite, to be quite honest, because you know I do a bit and I was getting, oh, getting annoyed, but it wasn't that I was getting annoyed. It's just that the parts are so hard to hold and, and you're, you're you're turning and it was it was hurting my fingers. My poor little fingers were getting hurt. But well, anyway, for the finished result, this is what you end up with. Now I'm after just popping one just as I pull it out of the thing, but I'll have to zoom back out again now. Just a little bit. Right. 
All right, there we go. Let's zoom back out to that. Now, this is after popping, which is no problem, because it's quite handy to show how they fit. Well, how they fit is the thin bit fits into the centre of that. It just fits over. This is not going to go right now because I'm trying to do this from one hand behind the camera. It will click. It did. Okay. It, it, basically, they, they, they click into place. All right? And when you have them done, watch that for articulation. Big word for John there, articulation. But they're workable tracks. You don't have to glue them in position or anything like that. They click together. And when it comes to detail, we'll do the old, look at that. You don't need, I don't have to really zoom in. They're actually quite nice. Oh, I've popped it again. They're not meant to be pulled around, obviously. And no ejector pin marks. All nicely clean and everything else. So, I have the two of them done. Let's pop this one back on again. From a different spot this time. Do you mean they're not meant to be pulled and dragged at? So they they are fragile still. There we go. And click. And it's just, it's that's as easy as that, John. But it is. You just line them up. It's just I'm trying to do it from a, from a, from a distance. That's that's where I'm. I'm not actually sticking my head close to it. Yep, there we go. All right, but anyway, there's there's one length, and there's length number two. So there's my tracks done. Got them out of the way. Got mad to get stuck into this model, and it, it, it's brilliant. Um, so there's my tracks into a into a little top of our box. I have the PE and the um, decals in there as well with it. Pop that and put away. No more damage. All right. Uh, next step was the wheels. There's five pieces for each wheel. You've got uh, an inner and an outer, an inner and an outer, and a poly cap. So there's uh, what's it? I think it was eight of them. Was it? Uh, no, 12. 12 of them made to make. Uh, I have them in here in this little box with the, uh, just with the, the spare bits of track. There's the uh, drive sprocket and return rollers. They're all ready to go on. Got all them done. That's another one of the tedious parts job. And then I've said, yes, now I can start working on the thing. So I got into the instructions and you took start do a bit of prep work before you start. You, there was uh, vision ports here which had to be cut off. I got to use my little um, my little razor saw. I mean, they're perfect, absolutely perfect, because it's got a, a, a bit of a flexible thing to it, so I can get in and get right in. Whereas, you see, I'm actually bending it slightly, and it went in. It popped in. I popped out absolutely beautifully. Brilliant little item that. Um, CK or MK resin kits is who make this little object. So obviously it's for cutting off uh, for resin. It's double sided. It's really fine at one side and fine at the other. So that that was just a little bit of prep work that had to be done. Following the instructions, it's on the next page. And then got to the interesting thing. This piece here with the workable suspension. If you look in, you've got the uh, torsion beams. They all gluing down to the centre, down the centre spine there, and you've got one, two, three, four, five parts to each one of these. But the great thing about it is, look at that. workable suspension so Jens, Jens wouldn't enjoy this kit at all because he did nothing to do it's all done for him 
all your suspension is there. So workable suspension, and the poly caps on the wheels, which make, means the wheels will turn and, and things, and the nice linkable workable tracks. Um, it, you should be able to articulate this any way you really want to for, for display purposes. And uh, if you want to play with it, you could put it down and, and the tracks should move. So it's it as model kits go, it's absolutely fabulous. Fit, no problems with any of the fits. When it came to doing this piece here, these little um, suspension are. Uh, <laughs> suspension springs shock absorbers there's like, there's a little piece here that you've got a super glue into the metal rod and then you've got the uh, the piston part which attaches onto here now that's not glued in there that's not glued in there it just pops in now what it is is it's a little split pin like that now I'm Obviously, it's not as big as my fingers, but it's a little kind of a split pin like that, and it pops into the hole, so therefore it catches inside the hole. You can see it here like that. You can see that these little holes here are the holes that it pop into, and it opens up inside. Now, I must admit, I had to watch. I watched Bees Beasley. Um, he did a, a build video on this, and it's absolutely fabulous. And thanks, Bees. Really, thank you very much, because. Um, bees had a little problem in putting these and once I knew the bees had the problem I just gave it a little bit of extra care and I said right why why weren't they popping in for bees why were they popping off and breaking off and I noticed that each on the on the little bees that goes in there was just the tiniest little bit of flash around the top around here just the tiniest little bit so I gave each one just the tiniest little scraping with this just that was all it needed and I used this to put into the rod so it was that in the rod so therefore I had um, a bit of support on it so I pushed the rod in and it clicked into place and then fitted this afterwards because that's got to pop onto that and it is quite um, it is quite a hard uh, pressing together you have to give it some bit of force for it to click so when I, I when I tried to do it when it was all one piece and you know doing it the way it said in the instructions it was just it was fiddly it was hard and I did end up breaking one of the uh, little clips which from Bees's, um video again I found out that you could even glue them into place it doesn't really matter the suspension will still work which it does you know it wiggly wiggly so just a little tip if you are doing this kit on this piece here where the little splines going just give it a look just give it a tiniest little cleaning don't don't go too much because you might knock off the yolk because it is very fragile quite brittle but when i popped them in and they i could hear them little clicking into place each one like i said i did break one and that was purely right at the start and when I just changed my method of fitting them on, I had no problems with them whatsoever. Like I said, slide the metal piece over that. So therefore you've got the little sleeve with the plastic piece here. Hold it up to it, use your finger and pop it in. And then once you've that one in through, then you can slide that, slide the piston part into the sleeve. And glue it in and it was quite easy it, you know it, it, it takes us time it takes a little bit of uh, finesse which I don't really have but you get it done and it, it, it comes up fabulous and it's lovely to work with and I'm that's basically as far as I've got um, as you can see I tick off well I put a circle around every single thing that I do and this is where I am and on to piece number four now, and it's just a, la a few more little bits and pieces to go on to, <clears throat> you know, the, dr the drive sprockets have to go on, the return rollers across here and stuff. And there's that there where it's telling you to remove the, um, the vision ports. Right, 
But before I removed them, I did check further on in the instructions to make sure that there was something going on there. And there is. It's just that you can model this kit without the all the extra armour. And why why would you want to do that? Unless you're actually building a specific one. Because I've seen a, a fair few YouTube clips. And very few of them actually have all the extra armour on them. So if you wanted to do one, say, in the, without it, just leave them on. But anyway, that's as far as I've gotten so far on the Bradley. It's, uh, I started this on Sunday. Sunday afternoon I started playing with the tracks. And it's now, what, it's now Thursday morning. So, say, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. Four nights I've been at it so far, and that's about as far as I've got. So, anyway, um, these little cotton mats. I'd say I'd talk about these. Picked these up today, believe it or not, in um, Aldi. Yes, Aldi. A-L-D-I. And it's a case of... There's two in a packet. A4 cutting mat. Aldi. They're uh, proper cotton mats. They're the uh, self-sealing cotton mats. Same with anything else. And there's two of them in a packet. Now, they had um, an A3 for the same price as two of these. It was, so you could either get two A4s or an A3. When I got there, all the A3s were gone, unfortunately, so I just had to get a pack of the A4s. Now, I have my finger over the price, right? Now, this, this price is the sterling price, and even at the sterling price, for two A4 cutting mats. Yeah. £2.99. pence. So if you have an Aldi in England, lads, I'm, I'm sure you have. I, I'm sure you have. Of course you have. If Aldi's... Thing. Uh, I don't know if they run their promotions at the same time as they do here in Ireland. In Ireland, the uh, promotion is on today for these. Starting this, mor start this morning, the, do you know the way they do it every Thursday or every Sunday for their special items, they call it. And uh, that was €3.99. So for €4, Euro, £3 sterling, two self-sealing cutting mats. Now, they're not the thickest compared to my other one. They're they're just a little bit thinner. But for starting off, for a little, you know, when you want to sort of, I mean, for showing off your bits and pieces like that when you're doing a video or something, I mean, that's all dirty and it's grand for working and it doesn't bother me. But when it comes to showing, isn't it nice to have it on something nice and fresh and clean? It makes it look nicer. But anyway, I picked up two of them for four quid. Four euro. Couldn't go wrong. Um, so I'm happy as... Larry, says we say, and Larry is a very happy chap, if you know Larry at all. Anyway, that's as far as I've got with my Bradley. Um, so I'm getting back to work with that. Hopefully I'll get another couple of stages done today. Um, I'm not rushing it, taking my time, enjoying every little bit of it, because it's a lovely, lovely little kit to work with. And um, we'll catch up with you on the next one and we'll see how we're getting on. We'll see, do I still think it's a lovely, lovely kit? <laughs> so, without any more further ado, John Moore signing off. Um, I'll catch you up with the next um, update. In the meantime, be nice to yourself, each other, lads. Uh, we have a great little community. Let's look after it. Um, thanks for subscribing. Anybody that hasn't subscribed, you might as well subscribe. And don't forget, hit the old like button. It's nice to see the old likes going up, uh, as well as the comments and things. So, um, thank you very much, lads. And as Steve Mottram says, may the force be with you.